All right, here we go. Blake Cousins, third phase of moon. We're live from Redondo Beach, California, and I'm excited. Wow, did you see our last episode? Did you hear the people on the street? They believe we're not alone. Let me tell you, there's no editing. There was no editing. Everybody right here in Los Angeles, who I ever asked, they, they know we're not alone in the universe. Whether they're aliens or not, I'm not sure. We're broadcasting live right now outside Redondo Beach, so I'm not sure how long this is going to last. There's a lot of sirens going on. There's a lot of activity. Man, let me tell you, this is quite exciting because, uh, you know, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. I wanted to hear if if you're reading me right now, people. Give me a heads up on the on, on the flash chat. Do you read me? I want to make sure we're good to go. I want to make sure we're good to go. Okay, here we go. We're live. And uh, you know what? This is Third Phase of Moon, and we will be taking questions from around the world, so this is cool. This is really cool because, uh, let me tell you, people want to know whether we're alone in the universe, and I got a feeling the public knows because uh, I know. I've seen things I can't explain. I can't explain it. Can you, people? What's going on right now? The governments from around the world got to let it out. They got to let it out right now that... This is the real deal, people. You know, this is this has got to be the time. This has got to be the year. This has got to be the year. Come on. We're done with uh, the smoke and mirrors from the government. I have some photos that I'm going to be releasing from NASA tomorrow, and you won't believe what you're going to see. It looks like a test pilot. His name is, I think, Bill Dana, if I'm not mistaken, and he looks like a an astronaut flying this flying saucer type craft developed by NASA from 1955 to 1966. What are these uh, black and white photographs? Wait till you see what I'm going to be sharing to you tomorrow. It's quite amazing. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to callers right now. So stand by, everybody. Let's get to it. Six one eight. You're live. Third phase of moon. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, Blake? I'm doing good. Welcome. What's your name? Uh, This is Alan. Um, There's a couple of things I'd like to share with you. Uh, I was involved in a long-running debate concerning the moon landing, which I'd kind of like to share with you. But before I share that with you, I'd like to share something that happened while I was in the military located in Bad Kissing in Germany. Absolutely. Uh, Let's hear it. Basically, what had happened is um, one uh, Saturday night, it was uh, like the second week that I actually arrived at uh, Bad Kissing in Germany. Um, I just had orientation, so I had very light duty. I also was suffering rather heavily from jet lag. But I was walking through uh, town looking for what they called a Wienerwald, which is uh, a chicken that they serve now at a lot of uh, grocery stores now is the way they have it. But they have Wienerwald chickens over there like uh, McDonald's here. So I was looking for it, and I noticed a bunch of civilians looking up at the sky and pointing. I had turned, and I looked, and I seen an orange sphere. It was about uh, three-quarters of the size of a city block. It was moving between two sheer uh, winds, uh, both counter to the direction of travel it was going, which made it even more eerie. Um, It did make a left turn about 30 degrees and continued slowly and disappeared over um, some higher terrain. Um, At any rate, when I uh, went down to report this, uh, which many people did, um, I was grilled and just simply told that it was a weather balloon. And I explained, well, the problem with that is it was in wind shear. And they they claimed that it was a C-130 with a special type antenna on top that would actually glow in its operation. And I explained if that was the case, I would have to report that a C-130 with a special antenna on top would have had to have crashed just north of town because that was a direction of travel in this wind shear and the airspeed that this aircraft could be going could not sustain a C-130. I had been flight line safety prior to joining the Army for six uh, years four of those years for warbird security at the EAA Oshkosh Convention. I've seen just about everything that can fly and a lot of things that can't. (laughs) So uh, I knew what I was doing. I worked with experimental aircraft. So uh, whatever this thing was, uh, I later identified when I was um, 
working with a group called the Unity Group in the 90s. It was a vril that I had actually witnessed later. Um, okay. The uh, debate that I'd like to share with you is concerning uh, absolute 100% proof that all the way up into the orbit of the moon is most likely genuine footage. But as soon as they had set down on the moon, it went to a field in Arizona, and you can look this up in the National Archives, um, that they had actually built an exact duplicate of the uh, moon landing out there, the location of it. Now, I want you to uh, imagine their reasoning for doing this. It's for training purposes. Well, let me think. Press button, pull lever, count to three, look out window. Um, exactly how is this assisting an actual training exercise? There's no reason for it. It was created to create a sound studio with other music, uh, well, movie tricks added to it. But the most confounding proof that we actually found was the fact that the most of the lunar modules were running at 20% throttle at the point of touchdown. They um, did vary slightly in uh, how much uh, pressure they were putting out or their maximum uh, push, basically. But starting with Apollo 11, it should have been um, about 10,000 pounds thrust that that uh, engine was capable of running at 20%. That means it was at least one ton of pressure and gases being built up under that craft when it landed. And you can clearly see that when the dust is escaping. But as soon as you uh, look at the photos taken from the ground or the surveilling cameras, you will find out that none of the dust um, was actually blown away at all. It actually looks like it's perfectly settled. Example, if you took a um, uh, leaf blower and you had a rock in your yard and you only leaf blowed up to the one side of the rock, it forms a V-shape behind the rock. There is several different sizes of rock on the uh, photographs while they're on the moon. You cannot see this V-shape forming. The excuse that NASA was giving was the fact that it was a gas uh, in a vacuum dissipating. Only that would increase this effect. So when we're looking for smoking guns and the fact that the uh, government has lied to us, there's your uh, smoking gun, literally. You know, I got a feeling there's something going on that NASA's not telling us. You got to see these photos that I'm going to be releasing tomorrow from a friend. He, he his name is Orv. I am. He's been submitting evidence in regards to UFOs, but this is something from NASA, and it's from 1956 and uh, 1966, and this is right around all that action that you're talking about, and it looks like a flying saucer, an uh, astronaut, and a test pilot. You know, flying. So, uh, it looks like he was uh, assigned to fly this flying saucer hovering off the ground. I'm not sure if these uh, photographs are authentic. It came in. I'm going to share it to the world tomorrow. But so, so you're thinking that we didn't go to the moon? What's your thought? Because I know people that are grown, like you know, guys in their 60s and 70s that go, no, no, we didn't, we didn't go there, and they know better because they know smoke and mirrors. So. What's your gut well, feeling? Here's on, one, on. Of the, one of the for the people that were actually living just afterwards and living during the event, they were old enough to understand what was going on. There was one conspiracy theory that stood out like a sore thumb, okay, um, and it would be only until about four years later, or excuse me, four years ago, that this was also discovered uh, as being fact. It was the uh, actual equipment was found, a new generation of it, in the space shuttle itself. And you can look this up in line. Basically what it is is a, a hydrogen fuel cell. You just simply throw water in there. You apply electricity. Most batteries, they have a lot of design in order to stop this hydrogen generation because it doesn't take that much electricity to actually start it. Um, you can run your car in uh, with this uh, material. As a matter of fact, um, Edward Meyer actually created a sand buggy that uh, ran purely on running on water. Uh, it just simply breaks it down to hydrogen two parts, oxygen one. This is the reason why uh, Apollo 13 was such a strange mechanical mystery that everyone also uh, talked about. You see, the problem was when they looked at the manifest, there was not enough fuel in order to make it back to the, you know, to the moon and back. 
The fact is they took it in water. That's what they actually used it for rocket fuel, and it's perfect because you got your oxygen and a very explosive hydrogen in order to go with it, and the convenience that oxygen is something that all the astronauts are going to need for the entire time. So when Apollo 13 happened, what basically happened when he stirred the tank is because when the tank energizes, all the water seems to gravitate away from that electrical charge. So it will chase it out of the grid work that they had created for it to create ox hydrogen and oxygen. What they have to do is stir it back in to chase that water back into that grid work. Well, he forgot to turn the unit off, and guess what? Caused an actual spark in the generator itself, so it blew the side off. That's the reason why they didn't have the oxygen. That's the reason why they needed the scrubbers, and that's the reason why they needed to go to the other uh, vehicle because they had a limited supply there, and they could depend on that. You know, this is a – let me ask you. Let me ask you this. How do you know all this stuff? Well, I've been trying to contact you for a short period of time. My online name is uh, Beware Mouse, and um, – I have been studying this since I was eight years old. I was involved in the Unity group that was a, basically it started as a way of us cheating on our college exams. We just simply, like a manual classroom computer, we would give each other keywords in order to look out for or phrases or topics, and uh, we would just simply read whatever came to mind, or if we did bump into something, we'd just simply forward it. We became rather efficient at this and uh, jokingly took on the subject of UFOs and the existence of God. Strangely, we answered both questions um, very logically, uh, one of which is um, uh, using a tool that is a logic tool. Basically, if you're uh, having a debate whether or not uh, water exists, and this very much parallel to the UFO story is because we're debating on whether UFO exists. Okay, do they exist? Does it, do they not? Well, let's use water as a topic instead. Well, um, you show pictures of um, uh, rain and, you know, streams and an ocean, and I show pictures of the desert and the moon, and, well, as long as we have these rules of evidence, uh, just about any conclusion which is false can be arrived at. However, what happens if a third party walks into our debate and plops a fish down on the table? This fish proves absolutely that water exists. Now, the problem with the UFO situation is the fact that we do have plenty of proof and plenty of fish. How is it that we can uh, uh, ignore water? We have this recorded all the way through history, and I've been studying this since I was eight years old, fascinated by it. And it started when I was a, uh, about three or four years old. I had a personal experience, and I still to this day have only emotional impressions of it. I do not, I was not speaking well enough in order to even describe what happened. But I do remember wow. a light. Um, it was okay. very bright. And um, if you squint your eyes against the sun or look just slightly to the left, you can see your eyel eyelashes and it makes spears of light. Well, my eyes were completely wide open, and when I seen these spears of light very similar to that and they struck me, I could feel the warmth of that pass through me. And this is the memory I have of this experience. My mother was telling me that we had a great amount of UFO activity in the 19, early 1960s in the Oklahoma near the um, Air Force Base there. And um, they would actually sit on the porch and watch them uh, chase each other around in the sky and do uh, uh, circles and, and spiral down in columns and then load themselves up in the top of the column and saw them get down the column again in spirals. And it was very puzzling behavior. And um, since I was, you know, little, I mean, I've been po these things have been pointed out to me, not necessarily immediately in memory, but the impression and the knowledge and that later on told what I was looking at, um, that it just simply became a fascination, a, a course of study. I've studied um, the Egyptian uh, pyramids. I do believe uh, Stitchin has a good idea. Um, there is very much, uh, when he points to these religious locations such as the pyramids, Jerusalem, and then it points to somewhere else. Uh, in the 1970s, um, I was living in Iowa City, Iowa, and archaeology was part of that field for Iowa City. 
um, there was two things that came through. One was the uh, caves in Mexico that were glass-lined and had to have been made by lasers or high temperature, and these were being found near the pyramids in Mexico. I didn't hear much later. Um, the other was, um, oh darn it, <laughs> there's so much in, in this in this topic that I can cover. It, maybe it would be better absolutely. if you had, Absolutely. You know what? This is what's got to be done. This is what's got to be done because we do this uh, Friday show every Friday. And I got to get everybody, I got to try and get people's, there's so many callers in. But man, you got so much information. What I want you to do is call in next week, Friday, and uh, share some more information because uh, you did spark up a debate, man. So I really appreciate you calling in tonight. Thanks so much. I did. I did send you an email containing my telephone number. You do have uh, my permission to call, and it might be easier that way. All right, man. You got my contact. Why don't you give me a refresher on that and call me back? And when I get back to Hawaii, I'm going to reach out to you. But call back next week. I, I, I like your conversation and dialogue and the questions. Is uh, you know, out, we're getting it out there, and we need to get the answers. Appreciate it. Thank you, Break, and uh, keep up the good work. You're doing a great job out there. Hey, thanks, man. We try, we try, man. It's a it's a big responsibility, and. I'm glad I have it because, uh, you know, people got to share their stories somewhere. And that's what I love about this. We got so many callers. Let me get to somebody. He's been hanging on for about 30 minutes. They, he called in really early in the show. Uh, 925, you there? Area code 925, oh, yeah, you there? Yeah, I'm... Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here, Blake. All right, man. What did you think of that last conversation? What's your name? Uh, what do you, you got something you want to share tonight? Um, nothing in particular that I need to share that I haven't shared in the past because nothing has quite uh, interestingly enough arised. Um, but the last yeah. debate, that gentleman, um, he has a very similar mindset to myself, wherein I've also been doing uh, numerous years of research in terms of um, behavioral studies and pre-dynastic history and everything of the like. But um, I, I 100% love his topic of, of conversation, but I would love for you to get on with your next callers because I'm just listening in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, yeah, you know, the debate has started. It has started. Let's bring in more callers, just as the caller just said. Let's bring them in. This is exciting. All the way in uh, Los Angeles, Redondo Beach, California. Oh, Out, I'm, it's pretty amazing. Let's do it. What are you doing? Hello. Hello. Are you there, 415? Hello? Hello? Yeah, you, you're live on Third Phase of Moon, sir. What's going on, man? How you doing? Pretty good. Where are you calling from? San Francisco, California. Nice, nice. Well, I'm on name the is, same name uh, in the same state. Welcome. Uh, you got uh, something uh, you want to uh, share? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, my name is Hub. I'm calling from San Francisco. Uh, I'm calling about. Uh, remember that that stuff that happened in the sky all over California? They said it was a Navy test missile or whatever. Yeah, some kind of Atlas rocket or something that the media and the military wanted us to believe. And wait a second. By the way, I wanted to give a, a big shout, uh, you know, uh, our condolences to the police officers slain today. That was, uh, you know, shocking to me when I woke up this morning. And this uh, this needs to be uh, taken care of, this kind of business. But anyway, yeah, that's, hey, man. That's crazy, man. The killing got to stop, crazy. man. They got to stop killing. They got to stop killing black people. I mean, they got to stop killing cops. I mean, you just got to stop, man. That's all it is. Just but, uh, make, make a truce. Back, just back, stop killing. Stop the killing. But let's get back to the Atlas rocket. You, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Right on. So, anyways, I was at work, and uh, I was working in Antioch at the time, and I was helping my friend uh, roll something up. And uh, I looked up in the sky, and I seen it. And uh, I'll tell you right now, if if rockets can stop for a, a period of, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, and then change course – a few times, and then, you know, there's this one video where it stop, this thing stops in the sky and it makes a big, like, circle cloud thing come out of its backside, and then it takes off rather quick. It's exactly what happened, and I don't know if we have anything like that. I'm just saying, I don't know if people fall for it or what, but I don't think it was nothing Navy. I seen it from, that was the first thing I ever seen with my own eyes and made me, like, start looking up. I haven't stopped looking up ever since. Well, you know, that's a that's a damn good idea because let me tell you, when we had our uh, radio show a couple days after the major event, I had hundreds of callers in, and I tried to get into everybody. I got at least 60 people in, and every one of them said, 
that they did not believe the major media of what uh, they were trying to uh, sh- you know, feed them. Give me a break, people. This is what was it? No Atlas rocket? Are you kidding me? You uh, you got to see the video. Shoot Check it, it out. It's up. Go ahead. I'm saying, if it was a rocket, why are they shooting it off over our heads? Let's just be real for one second. Why are they shooting it off, testing it over us? The second, I mean, why don't you say something first? Not when it's or you know, after thousands and thousands of people seen a UFO, you're trying to take the blame away. You know what I mean? They're just playing games. Yeah. It ain't no rocket. You know what I've they did? It. They did. Apparently, we did get people said, giving us uh, reports uh, prior to the event saying that, hey, look, there's going to be something going on. They uh, diverted traffic from LAX. But let me tell you, they said it was going to be uh, over the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. Everybody said it was heading inland. And you saw whatever that thing was. This spewing something. Over the skies, yep. man. I'm sure glad I wasn't in California at that time. I don't know. I'm just saying, it looked weird, and it did it. It looked, uh, you know, I gotta say, it looked like a, it looked like something so then, was praying over the city. It looked like a something going on. It's massive. Go ahead. You're right. I'm all the way inland in Antioch. If you look on the map, Antioch is all the way past uh, San Francisco, probably about 40 miles. There's no way, no way over the water, and it wasn't going west, it was still going east, after it made that big cloud of smoke and took off, it, uh, you could keep, you know, I kept my eye on it for a second, and it disappeared, but you could still see it, because the daylight wasn't all the way gone, and you could still follow, I followed it for a good, you know, five minutes, and so my eyes couldn't, ca- you know, keep up with it, and, uh, that was the craziest thing I ever seen, it wasn't no Navy test missile, so if you saw it, you know what it was, I don't know, that's what I think, man. First color is awesome. Well, you know what, man? You know what? I'm glad you have your eyes on the skies because that's what people need to do, let me tell you. If you're not looking up and you don't believe that we're not alone, let me tell you, you'll be surprised. You're going to be uh, sorely disappointed if you don't think we're alone because you're going to see something you can't possibly explain. Hey, thanks, man, for uh, calling in. Appreciate it. Hey, man, I like your show, man. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep up with you. I'll call you back sometime. You do that. You do that. All the way from San Francisco, California. Sweet. Let's get to, uh, I think we got an area code 505 on, on the line. Let's get to them. Welcome to the show. Hello. 505. Hi there. Hello. Uh, hi. Hi. My name hey. is Ariana, and I'm calling from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, wow. Welcome. I've been trying to email. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you You put on a great show. I appreciate what you're doing. We're definitely not alone. But let me just tell you what happened. Uh, this was back in May. I've been trying to send you a couple of uh, pictures. Um, I was, uh, Mom and I were going to the casino, and the sky was incredibly colorful and ominous looking, like there was a big thunderstorm coming through. I started taking pictures all around me, and um, I sent them to various uh, fam- uh, family and friends in Chicago, um, nonetheless, I, I got curious one day because one of the pictures had a little eyeball on the um, cloud, and I zoomed in, and it is a. I'm sorry. An eyeball? Well, it looked like an eyeball. Well, it it, it was an uh, it was a like a light. But um, it just, uh, as soon as I zoomed in, because I took all these uh, uh, simultaneous pictures uh, on my cell phone. So when you press your cell phone, it takes one after the other after the other, you know, all these consecutive pictures. But I noticed that one of the pictures, well, more than one of the pictures, had a light in it. So when I zoomed in, it's... um, not really a triangular. I've seen it on your show already. So somebody's taken pictures of the same kind of UFO that I captured. Um, that was back in May. And just recently, uh, approximately three weeks ago, on my way to Gallup, New Mexico, um, I saw uh, something in the, on the horizon. It was three consecutive lights. As soon as my partner told me to take your cat, take the camera and and get it, two of the lights uh, were still there and the third one had disappeared. It was bright. It was in the evening. That one I did not capture. But as soon as I can, I will send you pictures um, so you can 
post it and check it out. I was very much uh, wow. surprised. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Uh, I showed all my, is, uh, yes. We have our Facebook, right, Third Phase of the Moon. It's all in the links in our, our About page. You should just post on the, our visitor post. That's what people do. Okay, and there's I can so do much. that. And then we'll take a look at it, but let me tell you, we don't get to share everything on Third Phase of Moon, but we get to share everything on Facebook. So that's really cool, and everybody gets to see it. I look at it, and uh, I want to see it. I want to see it, and uh, that's what it's all about, sharing the information, sharing people's experience and uh, evidence. That's amazing. That's so it's so incredible. I gotta uh, thanks for calling in. Are you? Do you Thank see the you. crescent moon? There's a crescent moon outside right now, and I'm looking at it. And I'm doing this broadcast in Redondo Beach. It's pretty exciting. I will go check it out. It's a little over. It was. It's been a little overcast all day today, but oh, I will right. see what I can see. And keep up the great work. Thank you for sharing all the info. Have a good night. Hey, thanks a lot. What was your name again? Let me get your name so I recognize it on Facebook. Sure. It's B. Like a bumblebee. All right, B. Okay, you take care. I'm looking forward to the evidence that comes in. We've got so many callers in. It's quite amazing. You know what? We'll do this. We're going to take a quick break. This is Blake Cousins, third phase of moon. And you know what, people? We're not alone. We are not alone, and there's so much evidence out there. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, Blake Cousins. Welcome back, people. Welcome back, Blake Cousins, Third Phase of Moon, and we're live right now, Redondo Beach, California, taking calls from around the world, and you know what? This is what I like. People's stories, information, insight. You know what? We could break news to the world right now, and people just uh, could wake up right now and know that we're not alone. Let's let's find out if we could do this. Let's find out. Let's see who's up next. Let's see if 253 is there. 253, you there? Two five three. Hello. All right, we're, we're gonna drop two five three and see. Maybe maybe they're just on for the ride. We gotta open up the lines. Let's open up the lines right now. Eight five nine. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Yep, you're live. Welcome to the show. Hello. Um, is this third phase of moon? Yeah, it's third phase of moon. What's up? Oh, eight. Hello. Oh, that guy just dropped out. I don't know. Of course it's third phase of moon. That's why you're calling in, right? Eight four Hello. five. Hello. You're live. Welcome to the show. Blake, what's good, man? What's going on, man? Where are you calling in from? This is Lynn from Knox, man. Knox, New York. Oh. What's up, man? Where Where are you calling from? From Nyack, New York. Thank you for watching. Oh, from New York. All right, Nyack, man. New York. Yeah. How you doing, man? What's I mean, going on? Show, man. Everything's good, man. I watch the show all the time. I do all my information from Zimbabwe to West Fall. It's absolutely true. Aliens exist. There's other worlds, other dimensions. It's absolutely yeah. true. Man. You know what I'm saying? And and I applaud your work and your brother and everyone else. And I have to thank you guys, man. You know. Hey, man, thanks, man. What makes you feel that we're not alone? Have you had an experience yourself, sir? Well, I've I, I seen, seen two spaceships, not not swamp guys, not no drones. Not these, the drone is the new swamp guys. I've seen two spaceships. I've seen one look like a quarter. Then look, it looked like a shining quarter. It turned into like a refrigerator. And then it, then it exploded like a green light. And it was like six people outside with me. And right before that, we came outside from watching this show. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I got I got people who who do the giggle factor and all that stuff. You know, but in all retrospect, they know it's real. Everyone knows it's real. It's just it's just it's just it's just information that can everyone get to that consciousness level of understanding it's real. Sure, you sure. Know, we, we trapped, man. And, and, I, and I also seen like a the other night. Like I said, I live in New York. The other night, I was down by a pier by, by Hudson by the Hudson River. Yeah. I looked over with a couple of friends. I seen a big orange light. It just disappeared and it came back on. It was repeatedly, you know. It was but I but I like to say thank you, man. I always wanted to call in. And you know, keep up the good work. Third phase of the moon number one. Love you guys, well, man. 
Hey, man, I love you, too. You know what I love? This is what's amazing about this. No matter who you are, no matter what race you're from, man, everybody wants to know the truth. And Third Phase of Moon is that source where people could just share, share, share it, share their sightings. Wow. Man, I'm getting uh, I'm getting goosebumps here. Thank you, sir, from New York, man. Love yeah, it. I'm, uh, my, 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 my handle on the page is Major Galactica. You probably seen it a couple times. I have a couple arguments because it, it gets it gets kind of like annoying for people to sit back and be like, you know, like we only discovered the world's not flat. We only understand that there's other beings and races, good or evil. You know what I'm saying? Why do we? You know what I'm saying? For people to still deny this, to still deny this, it's crazy, man. It's just, it's just absolutely crazy, man. But like I said, man, you I know, this thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Oh, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I, just so much, uh, so many callers, and I got, got to get to them. I appreciate you, caller from New York. Call in anytime. Call in anytime. I'm glad you called in tonight. All right, man. We're gonna get to the next one. Let's get to it. Eight one three. Man, the phones are lighting up. You there? Eight one three. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, welcome to the show. Where are you calling in from? Uh, I'm calling from uh, Florida, man. All right. Wow, we got a lot of East Coast callers tonight. A lot of time differential going on. That's cool. Time travel. Let's do this. You got a UFO sighting you want to share tonight? Yes, sir. All right. All right. So um, I was sitting uh, before Fourth of July, the day before, sitting out on the side of like the Bay Area, and I noticed that there's a light that was red. It was bright red. It just sat there watching the fireworks. I was like, what is that? I told my grandfather to look. He can't really see it because he's colorblind. And, um, well, I see it moving, but it's moving at an incredible speed. And I said, this is no airplane or helicopter. It's stopping dead center in the sky. Then it's going left and then stops, then goes right really fast. And I'm like, whoa, this is something different. I know that I know what that is. So the next day, I go to a 4th of July party, see the same object, except for it turns red, then green, over and over again, and then it does the same patterns, and it, like, freaked me out. And I was real excited, though. I told my dad about it. He's a real big alien buff, and, you know, he yeah, got but real those, excited. Hold on a sec, though. though I, gotta, I get a lot of videos of red and green uh, lights in the sky. And you know what? They're just – they're well, usually they're drones. They could – you know, red and green is a dead giveaway. What makes you think it wasn't a drone, besides a light pattern? Well, I know drones. I have a drone, and I'm not saying that this could be a, this could be a different drone for all I care, for all I know. But oh, this, there you go. This it's unidentified. Stopping. You have – there you go. That makes yeah, more sense. It was, it was stopping way too fast, though. Like, it was – it had perfect balance. Like, this thing had perfect balance, and it was going way too fast. And it was too bright to even be a drone. Like, it didn't have any, like, tra- air traffic control signals or anything to really signal it as something else. But the one I saw the next day kept turning green and red, and I've never seen a drone do that in my life. Well, you know, this, it's interesting. You know, there's so many drones out there. And let me tell you, military drones are all over the place, and they're building them fast. They're building them so fast. They're gonna be, there's going to be millions of drones over the skies, and I got a feeling – it's going to be uh, intimidating. You just never know. But I just hope it's for the right purpose. And it's anti. Uh, there's some technology behind it that we can't explain. But so you're saying this this isn't a drone. This is this is unlike uh, any kind of tech that you've ever seen. Yes, this is different. This is I I just don't see it being a drone. It was um, I had my grandfather confirm that with me. You know, he's like I, I've never seen anything like that before. It's just the pattern that it was moving was just too. Like, human technology cannot do that, from what I know, like any that right, I know man. of, at least. Well, get some video of that. Get some video so we can confirm it's not a drone, all right, man? Hey, thanks for calling in. Okay. All right, man. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, there's callers from all around the world. Let's get to another one. This looks like it's from San Diego. We're going from East Coast to West Coast. Let's do this. 619, hello? Hey, I'm just listening, if you don't mind. All right, no problem, no problem. Uh, we're moving along. We like listeners. We like listeners. Uh, and I bet you some of these listeners that do call in, they've seen a UFO. And, you know, they're just getting up a little bit of guts to share their story and see what Third Phase of Moon is all about. So welcome. Welcome to uh, the show right now. Let's bring them in. Let's, uh, you know what? F1's here. 
F1, how are you doing tonight? Hey, what a great show, Blake. I'm glad you're you're a stone throw away from me. And um, it's interesting. It seems like there's a lot of juice tonight, huh? It's coming in from everywhere. It is. It is. It's just, uh, you know, it, the third phase of moon effect is finally kind of coming together where people are waking up that, man. Yeah, there's a lot of good information, a lot of good information coming in. The people that are calling in um, seem to be of of a higher education. Of, of you know, they do their homework, and um, I'm seeing people lose the fear factor. And it's I've watched this whole u- ufology. It's come so far, and it's so neat to see that you guys are really the ones bringing it together. And I know you guys aren't looking for any type of glory. But you know what? It's You guys deserve so much props. You guys are very good friends of mine, and you're very good friends to a lot more people that you don't even know because you're making it possible for people to feel okay with, with coming forward with their own personal disclosure. And uh, I think that the, the tidal wave, you guys have created your own tsunami of information that cannot be stopped. And uh, I, all I can say other than that, too, is that, you know, I feel like something more than disclosure is at hand, and it's very close, and I could just feel it. And I'm someone that's been there the whole time watching this and having my finger on the pulse. Um, we're going to see something huge pretty quick, and um, and then, you know, you know what? It's, it's awesome. There's some- I'm going to stand by, stand by. I'm going to keep you live right now, but I, w- I want to bring in this. There's so many callers. i got to get them to them yeah, right no, now. Yeah, we're good, man. I'm, hey, aloha. Welcome to California, you guys. It's great to have you here. It is. It is. And you know what, people? We're going to be meeting up with F1, and F1's uh, going to reveal what F1 looks like. It's going to be quite incredible. We're going to be on location. We're going to go over some of his experiences in detail. And stay tuned for that. This is going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. So, wow, this is incredible. Let's bring in 415. 415, you there? Hello? Uh, Blake? Yep, this is Blake, third phase of moon. What's up, bro? I already talked to you earlier. I don't know why I got back on. Oh, okay, no problem, no problem. Appreciate that, appreciate that. Let's, hey, Blake. I'd like people are respecting that callers got to get in. So there's so many callers. We'll try and bring in. We'll try and bring in uh, – I don't know if I got to 813 yet. Did I bring 813? Let's see. Yeah. 813, you there? Yes, sir. Did – are you the first – have you been on the show tonight? Uh, yes, you already talked to me, sir. Gotcha. There's a lot of callers, a lot of people want to listen. 801? Yep. Have I got you, 801, first time calling tonight? 801, you there? 801, hello? There's a lot of 801s here. Hi. Hi, how are you doing, Blake? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing really good. I'm Nathan. I talked on the show uh, a couple times before. I know you're that you're in California. I told you about my uh, contact encounter in California that both my father and I had. I was going to give you the address to my location out there if you ever wanted to head out and check out that area. Um, Absolutely. You're not in Los not in the immediate area right now? I'm probably about 45 minutes from where you're located. I don't live there currently now, but you could go check out that place, and I would almost suspect that you might encounter something. Well, well, well why don't you do this? Why, why don't you come down, and we'll go there together? How long are you going to be out in California for? I'm in Utah right now. Well, you're in Utah. That's about eight or nine hours away. I've driven to L.A. from Utah and back in one day. Let me tell you, I did 1,800 miles in one day. It was a, it was a joke. I'm not going to do that again. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well, we're here. We're here for about three weeks, and that's going to be I, it's going to be an amazing ride. Had, so, I just had one important message to give all the callers, and, you know, I really do appreciate F1. I know him and I have never really had a chance to talk, but... Uh, hold on, hold on. I, Let me get F1 on the show. Let me get F1 on. Okay. And you tell him. You tell him yourself, because okay. I love collaboration. And here he is. Here's F1. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, hey I'm man. Really uh, thanks, thanks, man. Uh, you know what? Anything that you can say is a compliment. Is, it's well taken. Um, I think all the people that 
call in, especially knowing how the Cousins brothers are with their love and their aloha, and they're just great people, is greatly appreciated. And um, anyone that's on the borderline, just call in. There's a lot of love here. You will be received well. And uh, thank you for any compliment that you wish to give me. It's, I can tell yeah. you that the only, the only reason I do this is to help other people and to find the answers myself. Well, I appreciate Blake and you guys. Um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a little bit because I know you're a contactee as well as I am. And I would have to 100% agree with you that something big is going to change. It's not disclosure. It's going to be more than that. And one thing that maybe you and I will definitely agree on as a contactee, the whole extraterrestrial experience is about knowing who you are more and that level of consciousness. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, it's it's that's why things are the way they are because they're giving you time to admit to yourselves and to find and to take your own path to find that that's just us from the future. And exactly, um, it's true. And you know, um, don't be surprised if we all have a little bit of lizard men in us as well because uh, if you look at your hands and your feet we do have webbed hands we do survive underwater even though it's with only our lungs we are amphibious we do have webbed extreme extremities and uh you know don't be surprised if it's revealed that we have a little reptilian in us as well yep and one more thing that i'd like to mention so other callers could come in line um, I'm sure you've had physical ex uh, encounters as well as myself. Um, one thing that I would encourage everybody that is trying to seek that type of relationship, because that's what it is, first you must devote all the time into that to get what you want out of it, meaning that you have to devote that particular mindset to accept what's going to happen to you down the road. And they're spirit guides. Um, and that's what extraterrestrials are. They're spirit guides. Like, just like us, we have a spirit. So do they. And the most important thing is knowing yourself because that's how they're going to teach you. Yeah, I was wondering, do you have a great love for, for people? I mean, obviously yes, there's good people and bad people, but, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. I don't like to see yeah. anyone get hurt, any color. Exactly. Any any level of intelligence, or 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 any of that. It's it's it to me. I've always, I mean, I cry when I see people that are handicapped. It it really sometimes it's bothered me ever since I came out of the shoot. And I've always had a great love of people. And I find with most experiencers, um, I've found that this is one thing that everyone has in common, and that's that's pretty amazing when you think about all your options as a human being and free will. Well, I don't believe really in free will. I believe it's necessary will that you, you must love everyone as you love yourself, you know, and exactly. if, if everyone would just hold, I, there should, it would be really cool. I'm going to try to start this. And when I go to public places, I'm going to try to get everyone just to stop and to hug each other and whoever's next to you. Just hug well, each other just for a minute, you know, and, and it, it's amazing what happens. F1 and Blake, just one last thing. If you guys ever come up to Utah, I'd be more than happy to include you in our CE5 group that we are developing here in Utah uh, to make contact with extraterrestrials to give universal peace and devotion to the universe, which we all partake well, in. Way cool, we're all part way of cool. That. Way cool, man. Thank you. That's great. That's that's well, great. Nice invitation. talking to you. If you'd like to know more about my encounters, I'd be more than happy to give you my number and Blake's number because I have plenty of experiences and I'd love to hear yours as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about, networking. It's all about networking and sharing. And that's um, that's why Blake and Brent are so successful with their ability to get people to come forth is because – they ne they let people network and they get everyone together. You can t I could tell you if if when you meet Blake or Brent, they're both they have a lot of love for people, man. They have a lot of love. Well, I'd love to go surfing with Blake because I know he lives out in Hawaii and so does my buddy. So that'd be a fun meet up and 
get to do some stuff. I got the best waves out in front of my house, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, trust me. I, I was born in Torrance, California, so, um, yeah. you know, surfing's a part of my life. I go to Salt Creek, Trussell's. You, you that's where, it. that's, Salt Creek is in my front yard. Trussell's is nice. five minutes away. Awesome. Well, good talking yeah. to you. I'll let other callers get in, but um, if you want to be in contact, I believe contactees should always be in contact to help each other out and others. That's what the Yeah, you sound like a real good, good guy. Help. Thank you very much for your time thank and you. your love. It's it's great to hear from you. Thank you. And thank you, Blake, so much for doing what you do. It's good that you guys get people out here to uh, let this information out because it's not fun bottling it up. It's deserved to be shared for everybody. Amen. You guys have a great night. Thank you. I'll keep listening on the show. All hey, right. Are we on, uh, do you want my number? Yeah. Um, you know what you should do is go, go into Blake's contact us and uh that way it's done without a million people getting it that you know we should be select about that absolutely exactly. you know that's uh that's what it's all about hello uh, i'm trying to broadcast in am i in no, f1 okay. f1 am i in i'm not in i can i can hear you on my end hey baby hey. what you doing Blake Cousins here, I think. Am I live? I'm live. Let's open up the chat. Uh Uh-oh. There's there's hacking going on. Now, I don't know what's going on. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec, people. Dang it. This isn't good. I don't like being hacked. We're going to close this down. Am I live, people? Am I live, 801? Hello? Hello? All right, all right. I'm not sure what's going on. If we're hacked or not, give me a, give me a heads up if we're live. We're live here. You know what? This is uh, unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. We can't get to everybody. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. And if you could hear me, does anybody hear me? Anybody read this? All right. What's going on? What's going on? Do people? Sorry, guys. It, there's something going on with my computer. I can't get out. I, and I don't know if I'm getting to other calls. You know what? We're going to do this next week, Friday. Stay tuned for NASA. New information that just came in. I'm not sure if we're broadcasting live, but let me tell you this. this is There's something going on. So we're going to hopefully get it out. Stay tuned to Third Phase of Moon, Blake Cousins. We'll see everybody again next time, all right? Shoot. A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how. What do your glutes, abs, calves, quads, and retirement plan have in common? Well, you can help make them all stronger by going for a run. Thanks to the 4.01K Race for Retirement by Prudential on September 17th. Sign up at run401k.com for the fun run with a different kind of goal to help you save more for the future. Join us on September 17th at the Rose Bowl. Register for free at run401k.com. Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey. 